A very warm welcome to all of you for the Public Economics Winter School. It's the fifth one. It's 2021. And the theme for this uh, winter school is policy choices towards containment and recovery. And that is in the context of COVID-19. Um, my name is Jeremy Tim, and I am uh, facilitating the morning session today. I'm joined by a great team of facilitators, speakers um, over the next three days exploring this topic. Uh, we often hear people talking about uh, living in unprecedented times. I think we, we're certainly living in unprecedented times events in our lifetimes. Uh, it's not the first time that our hum, human race has been through these pandemics, but it seems to be raining down on us uh, at the moment. Um, we are being asked to respond in different ways uh, to what we've done before. Um, so let me, let me uh, say a few things to get us going. Um, you would have seen the program. It's a fantastic program. I'll take you through that in a moment. Um, but let me just uh, acknowledge the incredible range of people that we have uh, joining us over these three days. We are likely to swell our numbers to around 500 people um, over the next few days, possibly even 600. We're nearly 100 in the call uh, on the conference at the moment. Um, but we are students. Uh, this is really for you, uh, students, young professionals, those of you that are interested in the field of uh, public service. Um, some of you are economists, some of you are health professionals, some of you are lawyers, uh, some of you are studying in allied uh, departments, some of you are from universities, some are from treasury, some are from departments. Some of you are from research institutes, um, and some of you are from international organizations that are joining us. And uh, we extend a particular warm welcome to our uh, brothers and sisters in the SADC region and the con continent, and indeed internationally. This has been one of the strange, um, I would say, positive consequences of the pandemic is that we are so much more digitally literate and so much more connected than we were when we last met um, in the winter school in 2019. Let me um, also acknowledge this incredible app. Um, I've been fascinated by these apps that have taken over the conference uh, circuit. We used to meet each other at the coffee and tea stand. We'd be eating muffins, perhaps uh, chatting. Uh, we can't do that anymore, uh, but we can certainly come up with a very good substitute and apps like these are fantastic. So let me uh, start uh, by just getting you comfortable with this app um, and also uh, outline a few house rules around how we'll be operating. Um, first of all, you will have seen that there are, uh, you join these sessions. You can also join um, the exhibition hall where you can find out more information about all the partners that have made this conference possible. Please do that. And in uh, particular, I encourage you to look at the GTAC website. Um, there is a wealth of information there um, uh, on all of the previous uh, winter schools and all the programs that uh, GTAC is involved with. You'll also see websites of the partner organizations that have made this possible. So please, please do um, have a look there. You also see that we have a great facility called the lounge. Um, this is the closest thing we have to a uh, real lounge. And you'll see when you visit it that there's all sorts of um, great uh, uh, opportunities for you to sit at different tables uh, and chat with different people. We will um, be using the lounge for you to have uh, uh, chats uh, in the breaks. We might have some of our speakers 
available after their inputs to uh, join you in the lounge and you can chat to them further. And also if you want to uh, uh, create a, a lounge for a group of you that perhaps are interested in talking about a topic, we can look at that. And I'm also seeing uh, the tech savvy people using the emoji function. Um, there we go. Uh, for people like me, I'm learning emojis uh, more and more, but uh, our children's generation are very good at those. So you'll see at the bottom of your um, screen, the reactions uh, uh, little tab. Please use that because that's the, a way of giving feedback. Um, and if you don't know what the emojis mean, you can click on them and it will show you uh, what they mean so you don't end up sing sending the emoji uh, for the wrong <laughs> for the wrong reason um let me also say uh that we have uh a number of kind of ways of managing the numbers i'm seeing now we're up to 132 so we're not going to run this like we'd run a smaller uh, conference where you'd be able to raise your hand to chat or to speak um, given the numbers, we're going to be using the Q&A function and we're going to be using the polling function. Those are the two functions we will use. Um, we'll be, we'll be scanning the questions all the time. Um, so if you have a question that you'd like to raise uh, to one of the speakers, please do so while um, the speaker is actually uh, speaking and our tech team and support team at the back will be scanning that uh, uh, that feed and we will see which questions get uh, the most votes or which ones are particularly interesting and we will bring uh, those questions uh, to the attention of the speaker uh, when we've got the, the time for that. Um, I think that's it's about the app, but let me say one other thing, which is also something that I always remind myself. We are learning new skills in this space. So uh, we will stumble uh, at, at various times with the tech. Perhaps uh, our connection will kick us out because of low uh, uh, connectivity strength. It's happened to me. It happens sometimes even when you are presenting. So our presenters, for some reason, might also lose uh, connection. When that happens, we will fix it. So if you find yourself looking at a blank screen and wondering what's going on, just take a breath, get a glass of water, and come back, and uh, uh, things will be uh, corrected uh, uh, when we when we sort out those uh, bandwidth and our own technical challenges. But be compassionate with yourself and with us when that happens, because it will. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about this program. We've got three days together. Um, and for the first time, we have a broad representation of different disciplines. I think COVID has brought us together in a different way. We're no longer bringing our badges of economist, lawyer, social scientist, or our organizational uh, turf issues to the table. I think we're all bringing a willingness to explore and co-create the solutions and responses that we need to this uh, pandemic. So uh, the, the, the theme of COVID and the diversity of disciplines is indeed um, uh, a first for the public uh, uh, economics winter school, and we are very excited about that. So let me take you through uh, our program. I think you've all seen that. The one other thing I, I omitted to say, I'm sorry, about um, you'll see also when you uh, look at the app, you can explore the different sessions and who the speakers are, and there's information on each of them. Their bios are there. So you can um, please have a look at those as we um, go through the introductions to our speakers. We're going to uh, start with welcome and opening remarks. Um, and we've got four fantastic uh, leaders from our different organizations here. Uh, we'll start off with um, the head of GTAC, and there's a slight change to our program. We'll go to uh, Mr. Robert and Kuna after that, who's a DG of uh, DPME, then Treasury's DG, uh, Dondo Mohajani, and then the head of mission, 
uh, uh, Chris Cooter from uh, uh, the Canadian High Commission, uh, who have been uh, journeying with uh, GTAC for the last four years and supporting the public economics winter school. In fact, this is the last one that they will be supporting uh, us on because uh, the program that it falls within is coming to an end. Uh, DPME, of course, is a key partner at the moment because GTAC is working with DPME uh, on drafting a, a COVID uh, country report. I won't go into detail of all of the uh, uh, events, but um, our keynote address uh, will follow that. Uh, Professor Salim Abdul Karim, I think everybody knows him. Um, we're very fortunate to have him as our keynote address, and he's really going to look at our, our country health response. What have we learned over the 18 months? We're then going to look at our responses from different regions around the world, um, which I think will be fascinating. We're looking at experiences from Norway and our own continent, Uganda, DRC, Senegal, and Nigeria. Um, then we're going to look more at how government is responding in uh, disaster situations. Uh, we'll also look at the constitutional framework uh, and human rights in disaster management. It's, it's brought up some fascinating dilemmas about how we manage um, human rights in the context of this pandemic. We'll also look at um, a panel discussion on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Uh, what are some of the challenges and prospects there? That will be uh, our first day uh, program, which I think is going to be and yeah, amazing. I think this is a brilliant program. So I think please join me in applauding uh, the team that has put together this program and got us such great speakers uh, for, for certainly day one. And there the emojis are raining up. Thank you very much. Um, tomorrow, we are going to be starting our day with looking at uh, lives and livelihoods. Um, how do we make the right decisions, allocative decisions in this context? And how do we look at our vulnerable groups and what support measures we can put in place to alleviate uh, suffering for these groups. You'll see as I'm giving you an overview of the topics, just keep on scanning the pre presenters and the facilitators and the panel. We have a stellar uh, 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 group of people to take us through this. We'll also look at um, uh, our own sort of regional approaches within South Africa to combating the pandemic. Um, and there, I think some interesting reflections, particularly from uh, Gauteng Limpopo, uh, we'll be looking at that. Um, of course, we are interested in students, uh, particularly, and young professionals. So we have some sessions for you around um, how do you break some of the barriers of getting into government. And I think, you know, this has always been a dream of the public economics winter school that we create an interest and a pipeline of enthusiastic, willing, creative um, dare I say, maverick sometimes, thinkers and professionals to join the public service so that we can uh, start to uh, improve the lives or continue improving the lives and, and make impacts where we haven't been able to make impacts yet as a, as a government. That then brings us to um, our final day, Thursday, where we'll be looking at, uh, uh, looking at modeling the impact of COVID-19 on the economy um, we'll look at some sectoral views uh, on the impact of uh, COVID-19 on the economy and how we're responding. Then we'll look at some of the measures that have been put in, put in place to assist economically, where there's been some sort of decimation of some of our sectors. What have some of the uh, relief packages been that have been put in place? Um, and then we will uh, finish the uh, panels and inputs uh, with uh, reflections on the economic recovery plan. Um, and then, of course, if you're a student, it gets really interesting because in the afternoon of Thursday, we'll be having some debates. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. And we will have a judging panel and we will end the fifth public economics winter school with the prize giving. So I think we are in for an amazing three days. Um, so all you need to do is not to relax, but to remain very alert and creative, but really enjoy the ride over the next three days. Um, we hear that 
you know, we don't choose the times we're born in, but we can certainly choose how we navigate our responses to the challenges that we find ourselves in. And that's a real important ethos that we're encouraging our young professionals and students to adopt is let's get creative in responding to the times that we find ourselves in. So thank you very much, everyone. I'm looking forward to being your facilitator for the uh, session until lunchtime. And then uh, Judith February will be taking over and the facilitators that follow her. So I think we should get going. Um, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. If I have, uh, I will be reminded and I will fix that uh, when you see me again. But this brings the first session to an end, which was the welcome and housekeeping. And now we're going to go into our first uh, set of speakers who are going to lay the foundation and give you a lot more background to the summary statements that I've already made. Um, so uh, we are going to go into the next session, which is the welcome and opening remarks. And I'm going to just check with my tech team and invite you to join me as I check that I am apparently meant to leave this session and go back to the main session and uh, take it from there. Is that correct, tech team? That's correct, Jeremy. I'm going to close off. Okay, so, yeah, you can close this. Great. And then we'll go to the next one. Thank you, Mary.